and this other guy who showed up at Trump events, and I got to admit, <laughs> it does they do look like the same person having aged like you know 10, 20 years. Have you seen that Welcome video yet? Welcome to my world. <laughs> I have yeah. not. I, it's hard morning. to keep up with um, fake nukes. He puts out a lot of volume, as you know. Yeah. Frank, tonight we're doing something a little different. I don't know if you got the memo. I didn't get the memo. That, that's okay. I'll cope. Do you check? The, I, I, do you check I have your a couple email? of things that I that I want to bring up, but that's okay. Do you check your emails? Because I sent you the email from. Uh... I got one about. Can you help me on this? Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Is that the one? Yeah, that's the one. Why is Lynn here twice? Oh, Lynn put her uh, screen sharing up. Yeah, because uh, this is all the background material on Flat Earth. In fact... You, you know what we're talking about tonight, though, right? It's it's all uh, about Mad Mike about Hughes. My, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think you should first kind of... Okay. Give a little back. I mean, I have basically given you... Uh, mm -hmm. There is a video here that has... Well, first I explain what scientific method is. I know people don't want to hear that, but – and then I have a link to Simon Sh – I have a link to a general explanation of the Tychonic system. And then I have a link to Simon Shack's Tychos. Yeah, that's good. That's Right, which nice. if people really want to do a serious scientific mathematical study of an alternate cosmology, that's what it – that's what that is. That's serious. That's a serious consideration. And then at the bottom, I have a link to Behind the Perv, which I regard as the all-time best documentary I gotta watch of the Flat that. Earth movement or cult as a social phenomenon. And an excellent introduction to police state surveillance of dissent by means of deploying convicted felons, pedophiles, and jailhouse niches and that was from jake gibson and tim osmond who created and i Gee, gotta say i'm kind of hypocritical about hold it on, uh, you're talking about uh jake the asshole yeah yeah he helped put this together yeah oh i didn't know that wow i just watched oh, i listen to him all the time yeah i like him i, I listen to him. him today you love him yeah he's pretty funny he's really fun. i listen to him when i need a break from the seriousness and i gotta laugh yeah, yeah i, I, I agree mean. he's good he's good very therapy does great and praise for you ought to bring him on you know i know i'm i'm you know i'm going to i i'm going to my god i'm now, i open i open this post with a quote from aaron Rodgers, and i know jake thinks aaron Rodgers is a fraud <laughs> so he'll probably criticize me for that but you mean a hey, football fraud well yeah jake's thing is that a lot of these uh nfl superstars they're just you know they're given well, they're scripted to be superstars, and they're not really all that talented, and they don't really play all that good. So I'm on the other. I think they are talented, but they are helping fix the games. You, yeah. It, you have to be good. There's too many people to choose from. They're not going to put in a bad player. So they are good players, but their games are probably fixed to an extent. Everyone has talked about that even before media fakery, ever since yeah. gambling. That's always been um, allegate. That's always been um, out there. You know, spectator sports is so huge. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so it's so influent. I mean, for a lot of people, it's all they've. You know, men especially. Mm -hmm. It's our only vice. It's, yeah, it's their life apart from work. You know, it's our only outlet. Yeah, in my household where I grew up. Mm -hmm. And, and my father was a self-educated. He was a high school dropout. He later went ahead and got his GED. Oh, wow. But he was a working man. He drove a truck, and he managed a laundry. And, oh, wow. That sounds like me. <laughs> but he read. He would sit s s Sunday morning. He would have the, the Baltimore did, Sun. The New did, York, the, so he made sure you went to school, or you put yourself in well, school? Well, they were really big on uh, me getting a scholarship, me going, oh, yeah, they were really big on education. Jews are really big on education yeah, and credentials, you know. So, yeah, they really pushed it, and they rewarded me. If I got good grades, they left me alone. 
So I got away with all kinds of <laughs> hanging around with really – I hung around with some of the worst elements in the school, and they let me get away with it because I was – you know, I was I graduated fourth in my class. They were real happy about all that and got the scholarships. Okay. But anyway, my father would always have he occasionally he'd bring the New York I mean, Times worldwide. Does okay. What are you sending me, Frank? Uh, just a couple of links of things that I want to talk about as well. Okay. He lived for spectator sports. He lived to watch the Orioles. The he bought season tickets to see the Colts every year. Here's where the original season ticket holders for the Baltimore Colts in like 1956, 57. Were they worth anything for, when he died? Or well, the something? Baltimore Colts moved to Indianapolis. <laughs> you oh, know? okay. So they weren't worth much. <laughs> okay. Got well, you. He, you know, actually, I did inherit some artifacts, yearbooks and stuff like that. Yeah, I have a lot of souvenir stuff that he collected. I got from him. Yeah, I could probably sell it. I don't, you know, it's amazing. I probably have a house full of artifacts that could net me some money. I should start getting out there and selling them, <laughs> really. Uh, uh, front pages of newspapers. I have the front page of the Dallas Morning News. It shows Jack Ruby shooting Lee Harvey Oswald, the original. It's under plastic. I don't know how much it's worth now. So, you know, uh, he was a self-educated man. He was no fool. But he was really addicted to uh, watching spectator sports. And uh, I think about now, Marcus Allen had a discussion about this where he said. Okay, listen, we better start the show. All right. Better start the show, Lynn. Okay. All around me are familiar faces, worn out places, worn out faces, bright and early for the day races, going nowhere, going nowhere. Their tears are filling up their glasses, no no expression Hide my head, I want to drown my sorrow No tomorrow, no tomorrow And I find it kind of funny I find it kind of sad The dreams in which I'm dying Sorry, I had to wait a minute and a half to get to the punchline of that song. It is Thursday, April 18th, 2024. This is the Fakeologist Show, and normally it's uh, Frank the Salt Guy. But today we were going to try and do a co-hosted effort with Tim Osman and talk about the fakery around Mad Mike Hughes, because that hit the media and Tim promoted it. So I wanted to just challenge him on that, because I think it's a total load of bullocks. And today we're also joined by uh, the great Lynn Ertel, who uh, got her microphone fixed and is not feeling petulant today. So she's gonna she's gonna chime in as well. And uh, the Gosh. only the only thing we're missing is Tim Osman right now. So I did send him another email. Hopefully he'll join us. Otherwise we'll carry on with our show, and uh, we'll just keep going. So uh, welcome, Frank. Uh, hi everybody. Thanks, Tim. By Hardly. the way, by the way, that's the best version of Mad World a cappella I've ever heard. These guys are unbelievable. It's called the Inversions. Yeah, hey, hey, isn't that cool? The Inversions. We talk about inversions all the time here. And I don't, uh, think, I don't think it's an accident. 
Yes, it's uh, by the grace of God that we're here, I think, and everything that happens, I think, Frank, if that's your implication there. But no, I think they call themselves inversions for the for the same reasons that you stated. Okay, very good, very good. I'm I'm wise beyond my own brain, and uh, we also have uh, Lynn Ertel here. Lynn, hello. Hey, good to see everybody or hear everybody. Lynn, you got some uh, feedback on your outburst at the beginning of last show, your technical outburst, but I'm really you really sound much better now that your microphone is uh, hooked up. So we're grateful. Yeah, I got the snowball technology here, and hopefully oh, awesome. that will be robust. Oh, it's awesome, actually. It's really awesome. What, and hopefully what is snowball technology? Is that a microphone, is it? Yeah, it's a 10-year-old microphone I have. <laughs> it's probably the most popular podcasting microphone. It was. It used to be around 50 bucks. It's probably about 5000 now with inflation, but um, <laughs> it, was right. a pre- it was a pretty good deal, and a lot of people use them, and they're, they're – Listen, anything is better than a computer built-in microphone. So I'm grateful anyone that just makes a small purchase to speak into a a proper mic. Now, I lowered my mic volume because I was getting complaints that I was overpowering other other guests. And, of course, my my on-the-fly leveling software is not set up because I'm too dumb to figure out how to do it or I don't have time or it's too impossible. Lynn loves to rail against software. This, This software... To try and set that up without a manual is damn near impossible. So, uh, so I've, I've toned myself down. So hopefully, that will sound better on the output for all the um, listenership. And someone also said the audio is way too low compared to other podcasts. But I listen to minutes or so of all my shows, and I don't really have to turn myself up all that much compared to other shows. So I don't know. I don't know what uh, what to, what else to tell you there. Do you guys have problems with the volume if you ever listen to these shows? Uh, is it too not low? Not really. It's no? pretty good. Your sound quality is generally pretty good. Now, the audio chats. Well, yeah. That's different. Yeah, they're they're kind of rough sometimes. Well, yeah. They, you can't uh, – everyone is just shouting into their mics, and I'm on my – usually in my car. But, Frank, are you have any issues with the uh, sound? Frank? I'm uh, finding it interesting that I haven't had any trouble with my mm-hmm. ISP. No, I'm just talking time. about listening to the audio quality of our shows. That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. Oh, so what happened then is I've been I'm being cut off regularly at the moment from the my ISP is playing up. Oh, okay. Well, what's new about that? You you seem to have technical. Well, except it except it only happens when I talk on this show. It's very interesting. Oh, okay. Maybe there's some. Who, who, who is your who is and your I, Internet and just service. because I'm paranoid, it doesn't mean that people are not out to get me, is all I can say. Mm-hmm, that's <laughs> true. Lynn, he's over in Australia on the south. Just like, like a local local carrier? Or... Yeah, I, I, yes, I'm on a local carrier. But you use mobile a... data. You're on... An... No, I, I don't, I'm not on this occasion. I should try it. Um... Oh, you're not on this occasion. I thought you used a mobile hotspot for all your connectivity needs at the salt mine. I'm not at the salt mine. I'm, I'm I'm in my company office. Okay. All right. Well, that's good. Okay. Well. Yeah. All right. So uh, let me check my email box. But uh, this the subject of today. Oh, well, hold on a sec. I got an email back. Hey, I'm on the way to the office. Just leaving the post office. I'll be here in ten minutes. Okay. So he's on the way back. He probably just went to pick up his mail instead of tuning into the most important show in the universe. Okay. I get it. <laughs> okay, set the scene, Tim. Okay. Well, apparently there was a show, or there's a guy named Mad Mike Hughes. Now, I'm not a big follower of the Flat Earth Movement, first of all. I, it's not that interesting to me, but apparently there's been lots of activity. I think Lynn is more up to date. Actually, let me let Lynn do it. Lynn is way better expl- at explaining stuff like this. Lynn, you go ahead. Well, I posted, uh, I've screen shared a post I put okay. in the. A forum. Yeah, here we go. I'll put it on the screen here. Right. On the science and the social engineering of Flat Earth. And I've opened that up with a, a link to an article in the Washington Washington Times that quotes uh, NFL quarterback Aaron Rodgers uh, just before he was canceled off of the ESPN Pat McAfee show. 
for uh, making some remarks about conspiracy theory. And I think he went after Jimmy Kimmel. It tried to link Jimmy Kimmel to Jeffrey Epstein. I don't know if there was any basis for that. But Aaron Rodgers, of course, is well known among people who are not into the NFL. He's known to people <laughs> who study the NFL as, uh, you know, superstar quarterback, yeah. formerly with the Green Bay Packers, now with the Jets, I guess, right? Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. And, uh, but he refused to take the vax. Yeah. Uh, initially, he said, he said something like, well, he, he said something like he was already immunized against the COVID. Mm. And what he meant by that was, uh, that his medical advisors, now understand, this guy is like a multi million dollar quarterback. His arm, his throwing arm, is probably insured by Lloyd's of London. I'll bet he's got a whole... Which is now AIG, of course. Ah. And and he's probably affords to... I mean, it's a business expense for him to hire a whole slew of orthopedic surgeons, you know, massage therapists. He's a quarterback. So he's getting plenty of medical advice. And it's pretty clear that his medical advisors told him, hey, if you think you already had this thing, or one way or another, they counseled him to avoid the shot. And the NFL came down on him for it. At first, he was accused of lying by claiming that he was already immune because he he was kind of walking. I think he was kind of avoiding trying to avoid a confrontation over it. I really do. Uh, But then he said, you know, I already had this flu or this COVID, whatever it is, and there's no point in my taking a shot. And like I say, he was – was he ex- actually excluded from playing in some games? I think he was. They gave him a real hard time over it. Now, I know, you know, Jake Gibson doesn't have a high opinion of Aaron Rodgers, uh, thinks that Aaron Rodgers has basically been staged as a superstar. I think Jake's argument is that he's only won a single Super Bowl and that there are other quarterbacks that are better than him. But you can bring Jake on to talk about what I consider the esoteric details of NFL football. Because to me, what makes Aaron Rodgers important is an experience I had about six months to a year ago. Uh, On Tuesdays, I go over to a Buffalo Wild Wings because I have a deal where you get like twice as many wings for half the price. And, you know, I have a hard cider and eat my wings. And they always have all these giant screens all over the place with, you know, basketball games and hockey games. And and they've always got ESPN on. And on this occasion, I was watching this. The Pat McAfee show had Aaron Rodgers on there. This is before they fired him, got rid of him. And uh, Rodgers was making his statements. And I was talking to somebody next to me at the bar saying, oh, wow, there's Aaron Rodgers. I said, I love him. I said, I like him just like I like Novak Djokovic or Kyrie Irving because they refuse to take the shot. And about four or five seats down from me, this guy who was sitting there really got hysterical. He, he he got on his smart device and was yelling at, I guess, his wife or somebody about how, oh, that idiot Aaron Rodgers is on ESPN, that crazy anti-vaxxer Aaron Rodgers is on ESP, ESPN. And this guy was shouting so loud. It was pretty yeah. clear. Hey, he Lynn, uh, can you accelerate to the point a little faster? Because we got Tim Osmond and his channel just joined in. Well, to me, that makes Aaron Rodgers a property. Yeah. You know? The fact that he evoked such a panic in somebody else because he was on this. And, of course, as I say, uh, you know, Rogers had talked about the similarity, uh, predictive programming. He'd, he'd raised a number of issues. And then they, they canceled him. They kicked him off the Pat McAfee show, I guess, for spouting conspiracy theory. So that's why I've quoted him here. Because I still think no matter who or what Aaron Rodgers is, this statement is absolutely true. And I will quote it. If science can't be questioned, it's not science anymore. It's propaganda, and that's the truth, Aaron Rodgers. So 
you know, that's the background. And then from there, I go on to explain what scientific method is, uh, which has its roots among the ancient Greeks. I wonder why this won't let me scroll. Yeah, you are going to get to uh, the Mad Mike Hughes part of the of the uh, right of the story, right? Right, because flat Earth is essentially an effort to look at and look for an alternate cosmology. Right, and it's an understandable reaction to the discovery that NASA is is a hoax. That everything NASA does is a hoax. The ISS is a hoax. Apollo is a hoax. People discovered us, and they're kind of. I imagine people who discovered for the first time are pretty shocked. And so it's understandable that they would start looking around and saying, well, what else are they lying to us about? Yeah. And so that's how they would stumble. In. And I really think that the, as, as a movement, as a social media movement, Flat Earth was set up to capture and track and monitor and honeypot and lure in these people to create a graduated animal farm where these people could be watched and manipulated. Now, I think people noticed that because what it was doing was, for one thing, it wasn't really addressing the question of what constitutes scientific method or an alternate cosmology. And I have listed links there yeah. to Simon Schack's uh, Tycho's model, right. which is an extension of Tycho Brahe's original geocentric model, not heliocentric, with some modifications, as an example of what constitutes a scientific model for an alternate cosmology. That is serious scientific study, and that's worth studying from the standpoint of mathematics and science. But getting together with Patty Steer and Mark Sargent and Eric Dubay, or, well, he, nobody gets along with him, and, uh, you know, some of the others in there, I could see right away, they didn't give a damn about science. Especially the biblical flat earthers. All they cared about was ideology, yeah. really. They're not interested in testing and formulating falsifiable hypotheses, testing those hypotheses. I list all the steps involved in scientific method there, and I discuss the development of Koch's postulates, which were used to identify infectious bacteria purportedly based on scientific method and that's a whole separate discussion yeah so yeah flat flat earth became a movement yeah but I, what i want to distinguish here it's very important is the difference between alternate cosmological models which is a legitimate scientific question as opposed to flat earth as a cult and a movement to be manipulated because that's what i think mike use and the rest of them were a part of now why – I know. You were probably bored to death by Flat Earth. You probably didn't pay it any mind at all. No, I, I, I paid attention to it because it came on Fast and Furious. But, okay, okay. so let's, let's just make sure we say hi to Tim Oz and make sure his mic is working. So, Tim, are you, are you all there? Hey, what's up? Am I loud and clear? Loud and clear. We are reading you. Say hi to Lynn Ertel and Frank the Salt Guy. They're, this is Frank's regular time slot. So he oh, cool. is um, he is a fervent flat Earth believer and uh, not completely incorrect. I I'm I, sorry. I yeah. am. I am an engineer, and for all practical purposes, I assume the Earth is both flat and stationary. And I say to everybody listening that everybody listening also assumes, for all practical purposes, that the Earth is flat and stationary and by flat i just mean that the oceans are flat okay i stand corrected okay so today frank are you familiar with the the mad mike hughes fatal rocket launch uh, that i, I have am. on the screen uh, not, here? not super familiar but uh i i remember all the stuff about mad mike hughes and because i am all right i've been around for a long time and watching it all happen i i don't actually I've never understood the connection between Mad Mike Hughes and Flat Earth, other than he's a rocketeer. Well, that's um, well. We're going to have to let Tim Osmond yeah. do the intro because the, the subject of tonight's discussion, debate, or whatever you want to call it, is I just question this whole Mad Mike Hughes event. I think it looked as real as Super Dave Osborne from the Bizarre Comedy Show, uh, but Tim Osmond has some closer connections. 
that he's he's going to explain to us to say why he says it is a real event. So take it away, Tim. Okay. Um, a lot of people don't have the background on this to properly ascertain what's going on because they'll say he died because of flat Earth. He was trying to prove it. Yeah. Well, well, he he emphatically said he wasn't trying to prove it with a five thousand foot leap. Uh, that was going to have to take a space jump, but he was going to have to build up time for that. So it was never that. The media always got it wrong. But what's more, he didn't just show up to talk about conspiracies and flat earth. He was doing daredevil stunts in public for 20 plus years before that. And then before that, he was in motorcycle racing. So there's like this idea that he just showed up for this. No, he could have died at any of these previous stunts. And then what's more... We did finance his rocket launch in 2018. Infinite Plane Society did. We had we paid for research flat Earth to be put on his rocket, but he wasn't really like um, a Bible flat earther. He was he was kind of a geostationary, if anything. Um, but anyway, okay. We did pay for the first rocket launch. Infinite Plane Society raised the money. And a couple of points here. One, the rest of the Flat Earth community, the conference earthers, the conference types, the big channels, none of them talked to him. They didn't want anything to do with him because he was stealing their spotlight, and that's all they were there for. But what's more, he survived the rocket launch. So if the whole thing was he's going to die and make us look bad or he's going to make us look crazy, yeah. all he did was he just drew a lot of attention to it, but he didn't die in 2018 – and there's a documentary about that particular launch. So he set some records, kind of an evil Knievel-like character. But my point is, from the beginning, you know, being skeptics, people thought, okay, Tim is running an op with this guy to make us all look crazy. Yeah, okay. And so that's kind of been the story. So just for people who don't know, not only did I pay for this first rocket, or did we, but subsequently we helped him get into a conference because they didn't want him there. We had to basically – just show up with the rocket and kind of implied we were going to call the news media if they didn't let him in and expose this thing as some kind of a controlled op. And then after this, I was his biographer, which meant I, and I goaded it. I got him to write a biography and that's what they were quoting in the New Yorker. So when you make your claim here as to whether this was a hoax or not, you can't rule me out. I am a participant. The only question is, was I tricked or am I an operative? So I'll we can continue from there. I have a list of points here, but my, my background there is just simply that that I was so, involved so in from the isn't game. there a isn't there a third alternative that you just supported the guy because you thought what he was doing was interesting? I, I don't understand why it means you're an operative or well, you were tricked. They're suggesting that he faked his death in on the twenty twenty launch, which I didn't that, finance. That was but, financed but what, by the science channel, just to be clear. But they're okay. asserting the assertion is that it was a faked death in twenty twenty. Yes. And if it was faked, then it doesn't answer if you – well, rather, it implicates me because mm -hmm. um, it wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for me. And on this launch, there was something that no one had actually heard about, which is – because this never went public. Leading up to the Science Channel rocket launch, um, Mike was in jail in Rancho Cucamonga for – and you can look at this stuff. This is all a matter of public record. 19 charges of extortion, paper terrorism. In fact, you mentioned, I heard you say Mark Sargent's name a minute ago. Um, Mike had made this kind of common law lawsuit claim on Mark Sargent. Mark Sargent called the feds. The feds arrested Mike. He gets charged with all kinds of stuff. So he wasn't even going to make it to that launch if it wasn't for me going through a lot of trouble, jumping a lot of hurdles to get the bail money, which I have receipts for. I owe people. I owe a now, lot of now, people. I, I'm lost now. Which launch are we talking about? The one that he died at or the one that you sponsored? The one that he died at is the one they're saying is, is um, that hope. he somehow that he, So you participated in, in the sense that you organized bail for him to get to the launch? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because, okay. well, the thing is the Science Channel didn't know he was in jail. They would yep. have terminated the contract. So it was a kind of – we kept it hushed, and now I'm in the hole by – you know, for, I owe somebody a lot of money, tens of thousands of dollars. But um, – and, and it's between me and, and his business partner. And so like every claim that I'm stating here, if it's a hoax, then it makes me a liar. Like when I say his business partner was in tears on the phone describing to me how he had to scrape parts out of the crushed rocket. Now, am I lying 
or did that conversation happen? If you go with the hoax premise, then I'm lying. You cannot take me out of this. And I don't, I'm not offended, but you just have to realize that, yes, I'm actually integrated into the story. Mm. Okay, but it, I'm going to suggest to you that you could have had that conversation and not be a liar, but the thing could still be a hoax. That's right. Frank, can you get on the mic a little better? Please. Sorry, I'll let me let me repeat that. Then. Oh, better. Oh, yeah, that's better. So I'm just going to say simply that another alternative is that you did have the conversation, that you did all the things that you said, but it could still be a hoax. Okay, here's another thing. The death we're could have been a Smith, hoax. This was not a closed movie set. And this was after – there. see, there were, there were multiple attempts to launch this thing. It's it's not an easy task, and if you've watched the documentary, you would see how it works. You know, this wait, was done wait, by, wait, wait, wait. The documentary is called Rocket Man, I think you said? Yeah. In fact, you should play the trailer for people who don't know what I, it's about. I, but. I have to admit, I don't know really much about the story. I was just looking at this video here on the screen. And it looked like Super Dave Osborne dropping from okay, the sky. Okay, look, so to I, be fair, yeah. to be 100% fair, anybody making their judgment based on that one clip, mm -hmm. w if you're an auto hoaxer and you're just automatically trusting or distrusting media, I can understand when you'd say it looks fake. Absolutely. But, but, I am but an auto how, hoaxer. But, but how do you qualify that? And then do you know the context in which it took place? Because there are people who say pandas look fake. Look at that panda. Pandas are fake. And it's like, have you talked to the zookeeper? Have no, you, koalas. Uh, I, I'm not, koalas. I, I'm not into koalas and, and that. I'm just saying looking at this video, it looked fake to me. So now – That's me, my point. That's my point if you look at this video. But if you don't look at it in broader context, including the background story, well, I don't then the I don't think you have story. enough – you don't have enough of a basis to judge it. So your non-belief isn't – it's a, what I'd call – and this is one – Well, unless the it. guy was suicidal, to go up in a, a rocket that's steam – powered and it's a recipe for death so the guy must have been suicidal was he suicidal did you hear the first phone call with him when he called into the infinite plane society i haven't heard was, anything honestly okay. in 2018 the new yorker did a story called looking for life on flat earth you can look it up and it mentions the infinite plane society taking a call from mad mike hughes because they're doing a background to him successfully doing his launch yeah and he said to me on the phone this thing will kill me if anything goes wrong, I have a 30% chance of survival. He okay. constantly made the point here that he's a daredevil and that he's taking extreme risks. And on this launch, people are asking, why didn't you have remote activated parachutes since he didn't deploy his? And and while just the, the rocket scientist there said he refused. He refused remote operated backup shoots because, quote, that would take the daredevil out of it. Okay. So there, yeah. Can I, can I make title. a comment here? Is this the video, by the way? Just, just the, that. Okay. That, that to me, as I hear that story, Tim. What I may I get more on the mic, that, Frank. Okay. When I hear that story that you've just told, Tim Osman, the um, you know the refusal of the remote control parachutes and the idea that it makes it less of a a risk. That to me sounds like he's setting up a fake event. No, this is that. That's the thing, though. He did that in 2014. He did that in his previous launches before the flat Earth thing. Uh, he did a public limousine jump, set a world record back in 2002. So what I'm saying is, no, he has had a 30-year pattern of risking his neck. Mm -hmm. 30 years. He made fun of Evan Braun. Who did his steam power jump and had a, had done it with a dummy and tested it and had remote parachutes? He didn't consider that guy a daredevil. So no, he made a big point about about doing this as a daredevil, putting his life on the line and making everybody know just how likely it was that he would die. Is this the guy? Is this the the uh, thing you're talking about, Rocket Man Mike Hughes? Who he really was? No, no? it's an Amazon Amazon documentary. It's on Amazon.com. There's a 90 second trailer. Oh, okay, so this is something else. Okay. So yeah, it went extremely viral. But again, this is a lifelong daredevil who wasn't able to raise money for his previous launches, 2014 and 2015. He tried. So then, you know what happened is he sees the Research Flat Earth billboard and he called into the live show because he had just started listening to Eric Dubay. And he says, I have an idea to draw attention to your Research Flat Earth. I'm like, what is it? He said, I'm a daredevil. I have a steam powered rocket. You can ride it on the side. So he told me, he, he pitched the idea to me on the phone, 
and then we agree to finance it. Anyway, oh, go see. and play the. Okay. Man is getting ready to launch himself into the air in a homemade rocket to prove that the Earth is flat. My favorite barbecued moron. A lot of people got the idea that he's just some kind of a nut. He might just be crazy. I believe in the geocentric flat Earth model. This is America. We can believe whatever we want. People have lost faith in experts. Scientific facts are completely debatable. The Earth isn't flat. I'm not going to take anyone else's word for it. I'm going to build my own rocket right here, and I'm going to see with my own eyes what shape this world we live on. Look, any idiot can sit in their bedroom uploading conspiracy theories to YouTube, but it takes a special idiot to launch himself into space for the cause. What do I do if it goes south? Did you leave a letter or something? What do you want me to do? It's a bomb. It could spring a leak, and it'll explode so fast, it'll tear you apart. I want to live through this thing, okay? Yeah. I want to see my cats grow up and, you know, see their grandkids and stuff like that. Okay, that's weird. You know, these things are not easy to do. Let's go! Let's go! It's going to have to do some re-engineering. Oh. oh, my God. To do something like this, it takes everything, and it will take everything from you. Let's go, boys! Okay, wow. Did it sell yeah, so, did it sell a lot of tickets? Uh yeah, that's that's I'm sure it's sold on um, the documentary on Amazon's doing very well. It told his story for sure. And after this, he went on like a two year tour. Uh, he was doing documentaries, media, he was on Fox News and he called Buzz Aldrin a Freemason. So why would an operative trying to destroy this thing go on to fox and say something like that he said buzz aldrin's a freemason they cut him off my point is um he was not a controlled opposition type the flat earth conference didn't want him around and mm -hmm. that's because he wasn't a, a bible earther and a lot of them thought he was just grifting they said he couldn't make money for his rocket so he got the flat earthers to pay for it and i'm like what difference does it make this is a billboard meant to get attention. And if you looked at the documentary, did you see how much media attention that this drove to the topic? Yeah. But that the, was net objective. the net effect of this, of this outcome is that Flat Earth and the people that uh, have the view the world is flat are hugely discredited as lunatics. Yes, I would say so too. Spot on. They were already discredited as lunatics. But nonetheless, and this this this, this, this no, no, actually hold on, thing. hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me add something to this. Okay, yeah. the Bible Earthers, we were calling them out as lunatics. We said nobody doing any kind of exploration is lunacy. Mad Mike, Mad Mike's mission here was to bring the question to a close, to answer it. He called me in 20, 20, 2017 and he said, I will answer the question. So if anybody was trying to bring more objectivity and information, it was him. Nobody else was making any effort in that regard. And that's but, why but they how does But how does a rocket flight give you the evidence that you need? Well, that's the question that you would know if you had watched the documentary because the media said you can't go high enough on a rocket. And, and, and this is the point. It wasn't meant to. It was a billboard on a rocket meant to spark conversation everywhere to drive enough attention to where he could finance his rocket to space. Now, whether that's achievable, but, but, it's debatable. But, but, but you know, don't you see the value of this, though? This was a protracted PR stunt meant to make the issue impossibly large so they couldn't help but have to address it. So this was, mm -hmm. in my view, meant to explode the meme, research flat earth in the topic. And that's why did. you sponsored it. That was your... That's, yes, and it was mission accomplished. Okay. And they didn't. And so if this was a controlled op, they failed because he succeeded in the launch in 2018. And the subsequent launch was not ours. That was the Science Channel. That was a different program. So you're well, that's saying... that's the one. But, yeah. you, but, you, but you did... I mean, you're, you're, you're involved in this second thing because you're the one that paid for the money to get him out of jail, etc. But that was secret. Nobody knew about it. I haven't even talked about it publicly. And we kept it a secret because it could have terminated the launch. They wouldn't have sure, done it. But Okay, but 
nonetheless, it, it wouldn't happened. it wouldn't have it wouldn't have happened. He wouldn't yeah. have been able to have quote fake died if I didn't pay all that money to bail him out. And if I'm not part of the psyop entertainment complex, then how am I going to get reimbursed? You know, like I went into the hole for this financially because I believed in the project. But, but there's no I've got no reason to accuse you of anything. Yeah, we're not accusing you. I'm accusing myself. I'm just yeah. telling you from my it's giving you my perspective. In my from my perspective. What I observe is that the fruit of this whole thing is that the there is a strong connection between having the view that the Earth is flat, even though, for all practical purposes, everyone assumes it's flat and everyone assumes it's unmoving. Even though that is a fact, this particular idea has now been placed into the land of lunacy. Yes. I agree. Okay, wait, let me bring that up. Let me bring this up because before the launch even started, the reason why the general flat earth consensus was let's not get behind him is they said, look, Tim just partnered up with a guy who said he has a 30% chance – they didn't – they like 70% chance of dying. They didn't yeah. want him to die on the move, and I was like, look, he's taking the risk. We're doing this to blow up the issue. It's his risk. He's a daredevil. So okay, I signed so on to I, I, So I, I, I knew – look, I knew this was a potential PR flop, but it wasn't for at least three years. Okay, so – so you're, Questions. You're, so you're saying the, question, the 2018 the, launch wasn't the flop, but you're saying the 2020 was? The 2020 was the one where he didn't survive. And right. after that, was then that the a Daily PR Beast flop? comes out. Well, if, if we're doing this as a PR campaign, um, it, fed, it, it played into the other side's hands. But it, not really, though, hmm. because here's the thing. This is where they got it wrong, and I don't think – and you'll understand after I explain this. They say the flat earth killed him. No, he was going to probably die in a rocket crash later anyway. Mm -hmm. We paid for his rocket. So you can't say misinformation did it. That's a misrepresentation of the facts. Oh, yeah. And I've called up Kelly Weil on this, the author from The Daily Beast. She wrote a book called Off the Edge, and she said, I was friends with Mad Mike, and when he died, I realized misinformation has consequences. It's like you know, this guy is doing a high-risk lifestyle as a career. It has nothing to do nothing with what was in his head. But there's nothing to do with misinformation about going in a rocket where you think you've got 60 chance of dying. No he more than all... there is about skydiving. You don't say skydivers, you know, skydivers die all the time. You know, you have tragic a accidents. Steam rock, a steam rocket launch has got to be a thousand times more dangerous than skydiving. It's crazy. It's, it's. It, well, and also he's aiming for Guinness Book Records. And so nobody's done this before. He set a record in 2018 by shooting up. You know, fifteen hundred feet or eighteen hundred feet, rather. And then on this last one, he said, "I want to go a mile." So he had already sent set a record for manned rocket launch, and this is a homemade rocket. Well, and something else too, he was a limousine driver, making fifteen dollars an hour. He paid for all the parts in his garage. It's all documented. He built it off of his limousine driver's income, and this is in the documentary as well. So but what here's is the that? thing too: what, what if, does that if mean, we're to say. It means that if this was a hoax, he's yeah. still the world's greatest daredevil, but now on top of it, he's the world's greatest um, a hoaxer on top of being a great daredevil. And also, he dodged possibly a life sentence. Mm -hmm. or a li so let, me, let, me, let me just um, just take up Dave J's thread here. I mean, his, his assumption is that there was no one in that rocket when it got launched. Uh, Dave so, J thinks that I'm a Jewish woman. Yeah, sure. Dave, no, J, but, Dave, Dave J is not credible. He thinks dogs are cats. He, he's got his head somewhere. And, but let's, and also, let's just let's okay. just lay, us, lay, lay that aside now and just say, okay, there are magicians' tricks that are exactly the same as this. Right. David Blaine. Right. David Blaine. Could this be a David Blaine thing? That's your. That's your. That's your. Well, my, 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 what I'm suggesting is, is that, is that I th I think it's more likely. Especially on the, on the story that you have told so far about how the launch came about, that the fellow was, you know, heightening the danger by talking about not having a parachute, and then by simply not being in the rocket, he, all sorts of great things have happened. He's died, so he doesn't have to face up to the consequences of this legal action that you're talking about. Yeah. Etc. 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 Cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's a very. I, I'm sorry. This is not my point. This is. No, that would be Dave, genius. But look, this is Dave is, J's but, point. I, I, the I'm question here, though. But let me let me, let me answer Dave J. Let me answer Dave well, J. Dave, and, yeah. there, there's, there's a logical flaw in this. Hold if time. Doing one this, minute. And Dave, Dave J if, is if, uh, coincidentally on, on the phone. Let me so, right. let me ahead. answer this first. Let me answer this for I'm on the phone. If he was going to fake his death and escape the charges and hoax everybody and stuff, he wouldn't have invited 
a public audience and TMZ and a host of other people with cell phone cams. He wouldn't have done it publicly. They would have just said we had a rocket launch sure he would. and make it. Yeah, I think I think sure it's just part first of and the... foremost. First and foremost, sorry, sorry, guy. Uh, first no, and ahead. foremost, there was nobody in any. There there was no body, no body in any rocket. Tim Austin. Period. Nobody died and nobody got hurt. Don't tell me that this guy went up in a rocket and killed himself. You are a liar. Did Do he go in the that. rocket in 2018? All right. Did he go in the rocket in 2018? No, but no, of course, no, he did not. They're all hoaxes. So Let's okay, continue what about with the one where you're, you're claiming he died. Was 2014 he did, nobody, no. Dave, was 2014's rocket? All of them are hoaxes. 2020, his, when you said yep, that he died, nobody his, died and nobody got hurt. Dave, if was you, his stop. 2002 limousine long-distance jump a hoax? That was a hoax. You can actually see okay. when when they have what the about, view inside the cab. That's a dummy, in there. What about a dummy in there. That's a dummy in there. It's race ridiculous race. when you watch it. What about his motorcycle? That doesn't have anything to do with what we're talking about. It does but, uh, because I have no we don't have evidence to call Stop. this stuff hoaxing. Stop are you, talking. You, are you accusing the Guinness Book of Records and, and the live audience of misunderstanding what they were seeing when the limousine flew 103 feet? And the 2014 rocket well, yes. launch is recorded. What I'm accused, 103, yes. you don't say. 103? 103, that's 13, crown corona? The idea of a false door? What? That's, that's well, just coincidence, bring, like, look, right? Look, anyway, has been so let's just go ahead and let's move forward. We're going to get to what this calls about. You am have I put out in the public David, am I an operative? That am mad I, am I the Mike, operative? you're acting like one. Am I the so operative, though? Mad there's no Mike, way I couldn't be included in this, at, right? So at are this you... moment, you're acting like one. At this moment, you're acting like one. Okay? No, no, but look, so my Mad involvement Mike with Mad Mike did not die necessarily... or did not get hurt. Look, Dave, Dave, it would necessarily require it... that I was an insider and an operative for this to be a hoax. And so I'm saying here, are you comfortable? Are, are you admitting to that then right now? Absolutely. I'm I... comfortable with that. Very comfortable. 100% well, uh, let me say that. that I'm not comfortable with that. I don't, from what you've said so far, I, I don't see any reason why you could you could not be completely innocent in this. Well, that's because uh, anyway. I, no, actually, uh, he can um, repent. I, he can repent right now. He can repent right now, which means change his mind and tell the look, good people hoax, out here that are listening hoax, that nobody died, no, nobody got hurt. There's no scenario. You could do that I'm right not, now. There's no scenario right where now. there's no scenario where I'm not involved. And well, that's right. Don't, don't, your don't, involvement don't, is different hey, Jay, to your, don't be a serpent, to your belief. Bud. Your involvement don't is different be a serpent. to your belief. Don't be that stumbling block, Frank. Don't be a stumbling block. No, no, he's right about this. Move aside. Because I look, I was the one who Tim, with the business partner now, helped bail back him to out. You. Look, I was back look, to you. Mad Mike Hughes did not die and did not get hurt, period. There was nobody in, in those rockets, period. Men now, do how not does it get into feel, rockets Dave, and fire Dave J, how does it feel talking to somebody who has been, in your opinion, spearheading a psycho psychological operation for seven years in full view of the public? Like, How does that feel? I feel like I... I'm talking to someone who should be ashamed of themselves. And you should look in the mirror and see the worst form of human trash is what you should be looking in the mirror and seeing. Because you, you would rather I'm deceive man. I'm a con, my, you I'm a con man. I, I, I'm telling I, you are a con man. Because your entire existence, in it, no, it exists only and for people's donations to you. And then what you do is you will ride anyway, just like a surfer on the beach. Dave, Dave J, if That's I'm heading a your whole life about that. Up, if I'm heading this PSYOP with Mad Mike and I got TV Did you say seven? I'm not Did living you say seven? off of donations. They're obviously paying me, aren't they? Did like, you say seven, bud? Dave, Dave J. Here's the thing about donations. Donations are in time. I wouldn't hey, be making – Hey, Ab, can I donations. ask you something? The Illuminati pays me. Hey, Ab, can I ask you something? Yeah, go ahead. I need, I need, like, I need like a point of order here. So then uh, you would consider someone's time and uh, time that they spend with your, with, your, with your product as a donation in time, wouldn't you? Time, talent, time, time, talent, and treasure. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so then, so then, what I'm saying to you, Tim Osman, is your 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 scam is that you get people butts in the seat and you literally waste their time. You are quite literally a pied piper. The tone that's coming out of your mouth is, in fact, a lie. 
But I'm an operative who helped fake Mike's death in front of the world, and I tricked everybody on an open set. It wasn't even a close set. You got to give me credit for being a great you, host. You, Tim, you weren't even there, were you? On on February twenty second, twenty twenty, which is the... on, on that day of the launch, I wasn't there, but I had Russ there. I wasn't there physically for that final launch. I couldn't be there, but we had people there. I had Russ there do the final interview for me as part of IPR. Uh, I talked to Mike that night because he had he been building a la- he had put a ladder on the back of the rocket. Because if you watch the documentary, they use scaffolding. He wanted to have like a staircase so he goes up and nobody's in the back blast area, goes up himself. And Can I stop you right there about hey, the ladder? Hey, no, no. The rocket hit the new piece he added, and that's why it fishtailed at the beginning. That's no. why it malfunctioned. No, it didn't. Yes, no, it, it did. did. Let me tell you, you why the ladder was added. Let me tell you why the ladder was added. As you know, or you should know, that all these Masonic hoaxes have an element of a ladder in, in oh. the picture he wasn't that's a shown Mason. to you or within he wasn't the scene. Mason. Wait, wait. And so the hey, ladder – yeah. Let me Go take ahead. a moment here. Hey, go okay, ahead. listen. Mad Mike was trying to restart – he was running for governor in 33. He wanted, he, no, listen. He wanted to restart the a third party. Do you know what the original third party in America was founded on, Dave J.? Hello. What is Anyways, the, going back to the ladder, they, each no, no, one Dave, of the know, hosts will show you a ladder. What is the idea What was the original third party? What is it? What was it for? It was the no nothing. It was the, the no nothing is, party. No, no, no. It was the anti Masonic party. Okay. And Mike oh, was trying okay. to bring that back. The ladder so is. You ta- JJ, you don't know what you're the, talking about. The okay. ladder is used to show the idea of steps. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm a Mason. I can tell you about the ladder. Had nothing to do with Mike's rocket. Oh, that's interesting. You just said that you're a Mason and that you can tell us about the ladder? Yeah. Like, I just heard you say that. Yeah, I mean, it's a common symbol, but ladders are everywhere. But it wasn't even a ladder. It was a staircase no. that we built. No. Let me it tell you what it means. Masonic, Let me tell it you what it means. Part of a Masonic so, sorry, thing. where, it where, a, excuse me, where was the ladder? I'm confused. I'm, I'm lost here. Where was there a no, ladder? Dave Jay's lost. Dave Jay is lost, and this isn't even worth pursuing. He built this kind of scaffolding thing, okay. and and it's not even a ladder. And Dave's just, it's a Masonic thing. It's like Dave Jay doesn't know what he's talking about. As you, you said, it was a ladder. You said he specifically okay. replaced it with a ladder. All right. Well, I use the word ladder. Look, it was a piece of metal that he put there so he could climb into the cockpit without needing scaffolding. Okay, you just admitted. People. Okay, Dave Jay. Let's... You admitted to being a Mason. Well, you know, he just admitted to me in a Mason, hey, and hey, he hey, can explain the ladder. Per their lore, can you do that for me? Scale, I'm Illuminati. I'm higher than just a Mason. I've got to be an operative. No, and... you're just you're you're a low level oh, okay. blue lodge. I can't or, be low or, level. I can't or, be low level. I was just part you of you are low level. You're very low last... level. I'm 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 the you're low level. You're what about four foot five. But look, I, 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 four, four, guys, I don't. Hold on, Frank. just as a, I need to interject. Yeah, go ahead, I don't Frank. see any point in you guys calling each other's names. Or yeah, let's stop calling names now. Dave, Dave, okay, Frank, you, you go ahead and keep being that stumbling block. Uh, Anyways, if anybody wants but, well, to know I, about look, the Masonic ladder hey. idea, I will talk to them. But okay. If, if if Ab, you want to go ahead and continue, I will leave. But okay. You you everyone heard. We heard. We heard got your that, message, that Dave. Said. All, no. all, all I all I'm asking of you, Dave, is there's no reason. To be unpleasant. Yes. There's no reason at all. We're just trying to get. We accept that you disagree with me. Can can I tell you the reason? Okay. Last comment because we got other we got other comments. Go ahead, Dave J. Okay. Here here's the reason. You you do not walk into the room and false witness death because if you do that, you are a spiritual murderer and a liar, and that makes you a demon. So stop it. Okay. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank, thank you, Dave. Be blessed. There goes Dave J. Okay, Dave J. Ring up some. Lynn, we haven't heard from you in a minute. What What do you say to all this? Well, it's pretty clear that Frank and I suspect that uh, that Tim got played, <laughs> that he got hoaxed. Okay. I would uh, be in on it, Lynn. How do you say that? No, I'm- no, not that you're in on it. That you got played. But a more important question for me is would we do something like – would you ever do something like this again, or is it in fact a strategic uh, misstep? Is it – in other words – Wait, wait, mis- wait. What do you mean played? He succeeded in the rocket launch that I paid for. He no, but- died on the Science Channel one. You don't – I don't know if you got that. But you're, it's, No, it's, it's- you got played by promoting – by – Oh, the, the whole complex of things, you know. The, it is complex, yeah. We accomplished yeah. our mission. I put the research flat earth billboard up. 
We got his attention. We put it on his rocket. We blew it up for more attention. And what's the net won- gain? What's the, the net, net gain? The net gain was blowing up the conversation so everyone in the media would have to talk about something they knew nothing about. Have we discredited and- NASA effectively by doing this? We've enlarged the pool of people who no longer believe Ah, uh, yes. Absolutely so, we have. Absolutely it's an opportunistic, well, it's an opportunistic I, play. It was genius. It was a marketing move. And I, 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 think, also, I think I would have to say, Tim. Makes us look cheap. That, that, makes that us look cheap. your view. My view is that this is a very big success for the um, – Discredit you know, by association. View. Yeah, discredit EBA, by association. right. Yeah, it is a big success for the discredit by association. In my opinion. Other people that's why right. that's what Jimmy Kimmel day. hey, that's why Jimmy Kimmel got involved in the in the conference and everything. And that might be worth addressing, uh, because it's pretty clear that Flat Earth in general, whether it was actually generated as a psyop, which it may have been, uh, to counter critics of NASA. But it's pretty clear by the time of that they were having these conventions that it was being manipulated. It was being yeah. taken in a certain well, Lynn, direction. Lynn, can you answer one thing for me, Lynn? Um, that this is the question I have to raise here because you suggested I got played or duped. But the launch was going to be scrapped because he wasn't going to make it, and he would have lost the contract if it was understood that he had been yeah. – he was in jail facing 19 charges. So That's asking, the drama. That's the no, drama. No, 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 no. I, can, I can prove to you. I can actually prove it's an to you. interesting I, number. I, look, let me, let me bring this up here because Mark Sargent is the one – Mark Sargent and others called the FBI on him for what he was doing with his common law claims on people's names. Mm-hmm. My point of it is the, the rocket launch wasn't going to happen because he was and, – and even the uh, – Waldo called me and said Mike's going to probably die in jail. So my point but of it is I, if he – no, wait. Let me finish. If he was an operative, why would he be in jail? And the only reason he made it on time was I – Really, you bailed him a out. lot into bailing him out, and so you're saying I got played. It's like well, no, it's, it didn't. It wouldn't have happened if I didn't do that, Lynn. So can you still make that claim that I was played, Lynn? Isn't it? They yeah, also I think, wrapping I think up the used, sovereign yeah. citizen. No, wait, wait, no. Can you still say that I wasn't a part of it since I'm the one who took him to the location? It wouldn't have happened if I didn't bail him out. And if they're running a psyop, they would have bailed him out, would they not have? No, I think they sucked you in and they used you. Of yeah. course. You know what I mean? You mean, oh, wait, we're going to run a PSYOP, but if Tim can't come up with $40,000, it's not going to happen. Well, that may have, you know, that may have been sort of an ancillary you know, that doesn't make aspect any sense. of it. You but, cannot uh, say that it was a hoax without me being implicated. I, I know mean, this guy. Want, this man, man. Have plausible, I have no plausible deniability. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it to other people to, to make up their view about, about how you're implicated. You are implicated. The science channel? The science channel. You're, okay. you're implicated, but it's a case of whether you were whether you were duped or you knowingly did it. That's that's all. And I I make no and I've got no point. reason yes. to yes. say one way or another. No, no, um there is no place where I'm not a Old part time. of it. So. Hey, Looks like we got another eight. caller in or caller in or where are you calling from? What's your name? This is Dookie Foot from Arkansas. Dookie Foot, Dookie have you Foot? welcome. Have you heard of this story before? I'm I'm pretty ignorant about yeah. the story. So what do you know? Yeah, I've heard of it before. Um, first thing I want to say though is Tim Osmond keeps talking about the Science Channel and TMZ, like those even matter. Those are all ma- that's all mainstream media. They're involved in fakery all the time, especially death faking. Especially TMZ. Not TMZ. This was not in the TMZ. world. TMZ. How TMZ, is, is, how does, TMZ hey, is the leading media outlet hey, for death faking. This, this was not exactly. a mainstream. One hundred percent, man. This was not a mainstream media event. It was self-produced yeah. on the first one. Nobody was there. The second one, he managed to get TMZ to show up at the last minute. They couldn't get live internet. They had to upload it right after TMZ. Their phone. They had a phone video that most of you saw. But no, this was actually. Um, this this whole thing was not a mainstream media event, but more yeah, like a lot of cool. onlookers. It was an open set. It was an open movie set. There was no holes. No, there was I no disagree. place where. No, it's not something you can disagree, disagree on. One hundred percent. You're entitled to your own opinions, but and, you're not and entitled the, the to fact your own that, The fact that the fact that TMZ couldn't couldn't get the shot live. That's just a convenient. Uh, Do you know hour. where this was filmed? Do you know where this that's was filmed? That's a convenient out. This was filmed. This was the, filmed in the Mojave Desert. Okay. If you're not aware. There was no. The, it doesn't the, matter. Were, I was out there. I was out there multiple times. Like I don't think you have a base of knowledge to say, "Oh, it was fake." You're 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 Listen, a low information non-believer. When I when I very when I very first heard about it, I heard about it directly from the news. Directly from the news, they were talking about it. It was as mainstream as you can get. 
The fact that you're using that the science point. channel this and was TMZ a PR is evidence, don't you understand? The that whole means point absolutely to nothing to me. No, no. The whole point of this was to get on the news. We were trying to get an issue that wasn't getting mainstream attention on the news. That's why I did a billboard. Now, when I did the billboard, it went on CBS and ABC. That went on mainstream. We were using okay. the news to draw attention to something that's fundamentally against the system, once against again, the establishment. Once again, I, once again, I can call you out on that because by 2020, a very large section of the planet was exposed to flat earth. A very large. Oh, yeah. Five Thanks years. Thanks to Mad Mike's launch. Mad Mike launched 20, in 2018. By, 2018 was five a years, documentary. Five years from YouTube. Yes, but five listen, Tim. YouTube. Tim, by 2020, a very large amount of people were aware of Flat Earth. A no very doubt. Large. No doubt. And, and look, there were multiple documentaries. Uh, Mike was in a, a documentary. That we, Mike was at the Flat Earth conference. Like, no duh. We tried to get them to speak at the conference. They didn't want them on the stage. Instead, they were platforming sex offenders and other weirdos. But we managed to get okay, Mike that, in against their will, and they were resentful of us for it, by the way. That just sounds like more hype. More, more hype, drama. more hype. It's more not hype. hype. It's a hype. They literally did not it want him in. Like a, I, paid, I paid Mike to show up, and I said, Mike, look, if they don't let you put your rocket in the conference room, we're going to call the mainstream media and call these guys out as, as operatives. And when I went in there, the – Conference organizer, Cammie, grabbed me by the wrist, and I thought she was a sweet lady. I just followed her, and she took me to this cop, and they had their eyes on me the whole time, and they thought I was there to make trouble, that Mike was there to make trouble. No, they didn't want him there. Oh, you can find a video of deep inside the rabbit hole putting a video saying, don't listen to Mad Mike. These people did not like him. I, I don't know how much more clear I can make that. Like, what was this? It doesn't matter who liked who. He, he, he's either legitimate or he's not. The fact He's that, legitimate. Oh, well, I'm he's gonna legitimate. He's legitimate in the sense that he was an outsider, and his intro to Flat Earth was Eric Dubay videos, and then he sees my billboard. Yeah. AJ206 uh, okay, is saying that uh, the caller knows nothing, Lynn knows nothing. Call in AJ206 and straighten us out if we don't know yeah, anything. Call in. But call here's in. the thing. Tim Osmond is doing the same exact thing to me that he did to JFJ. He's not letting any words get through. That's fine with me. I'm calling it. As soon as I heard about Mad Mike, I instantly knew it was bullshit before he died. I knew it was a stunt. I knew it was going to be a fake stunt. The fact that was, TMZ wait, and Science Channel is the only thing that you can stunt. lean on. No, no, no. Was Don't a, cut me off. Don't cut me off. You can't say it's a, no, the the fact fact it's a fake can stunt do is, when you don't know about his 30 year of stunts. It doesn't matter. This particular. You can have a. You can, ha, you can do whatever you want in life, but the one time that you fuck something up. That, it doesn't. None of the other stuff matters. Hmm. That's like I could live a clean life for thirty years and then shoot my wife in the head. Oh no no no! Don't, there do, don't do that. Don't do that. What I'm saying here is I'm that not, I'm already just, it's the same. He was I'm comparing. I'm, I'm comparing just, your your BS to some BS that I just invented. No, this guy is that, a an established daredevil who couldn't get his last matter. rocket project off the ground, and then he found flat earthers to pay for it. And okay, I said, this is a good idea. A, a lot of people like you, a lot of people didn't think it was a good idea because they were afraid of what the media would say. They're like, oh, they're going to make us look bad. And I'm like, you guys already look bad. We already look bad. Okay, so they hate us. You're literally describing a scammer. That's that's how scammers operate. It was a PR anyway, stunt, and that's we were scamming. Guys. We were scamming the mainstream that's media that's into – look, we were scamming the media into paying attention. Okay. Thank you, Duke. This was a cult Look, this was culture jamming. Is what it was. Like that was the whole point. Uh, these people are taking a very mainstream view of it. Like, oh, they're going to make us look bad. It's like you guys realize you already look bad. You're you can't look good to the dominant Please paradigm. Hang up. You're trying to. Okay, thank you, Dookie Foot. Sorry. Wow. Okay. Anyone that wants to uh, call in, the phone number is at the bottom of the screen. Eight ten triple six nineteen eighty four nine zero two four hundred nineteen eighty four. Um. Any more? Uh, by, by the way, I, I posted, uh, and I, I can't find this now. I, I think I posted it yesterday in reply to some discussion, but mm -hmm. a really long thread, or maybe I have this in the blog, in the forum, uh, that has a YouTube video. Okay. Uh, actually, let me put this in the uh, private chat. I'll, I'll... Uh, of uh, Mark Sargent and Tim Osman and some others. Mm -hmm. uh, let me find it. What were they doing? Now, Lynn, let me ask you this, Lynn. Lynn, if I was duped, then why aren't I trying to get a reimbursement on my $40,000 for a guy that got away with these charges? Well, I don't know how like, you could do that. 
I don't know how no, exactly. I mean, how could I sit here after being scammed for forty thousand dollars and say no, this isn't a hoax? Like, why wouldn't I dig into it if it was a hoax? If I had lost that much money? Well, that's about self deception, and I, I don't know what the basis of your deep belief in the personal integrity of Mike Hughes was, because I was no, never no, that. I was never that impressed. I, I, he was. I, I had. I, I it seemed like the guy from Arkansas said I. I was real skeptical about the whole thing. I said, what is this about? It looks like a cheap, attention-seeking, sensationalist stunt. Because if you were going to show that there was no curve, you'd send ca- – actually, this has been done now. They weren't you'd trying to show cameras- It was a stunt. It he was, was trying to get famous. Stunt. But it has and nothing to do – it has nothing to do with flat earth. Nothing to do with flat earth. Nothing to do with alternate cosmology. August Nobody, Picard went up in a balloon 60,000 feet. And no one's only the lying – only the lying media misrepresented it as an attempt to prove the earth flat. Nobody with any intelligence thinks that he was trying to do that. That is pure misinformation. And in that New Yorker article, in the first paragraph, he says, it says, Mike hates the res- – he resents the claim that he's trying to prove the earth flat. That's for a future – Actually, that kind of explains why many of the people associated with this flat earth movement – would have kind of justifiably been suspicious of his role in this because what does it have to do with flat earth anyway it's really got nothing to do with it if you think about it he was doing it to do a world record manned rocket launch i'll tell you where it might have been meaningful it might have been meaningful if he just said i'm an alternative to nasa but then again elon musk has already done that right so it's that's not exactly like that would be original but to me it's a wash and i'm more concerned about like let me ask you this. If another Mike Hughes came along tomorrow, would you do the same thing in the same way? I, I don't this think was ne- so. Lynn, this was never an attempt to prove the earth flat. This no, was I didn't effect. say that. The publicity I didn't done. say that. It should be an attempt to propagandize our point of view. That's what it did. That's no. what it was for. No, That's I, what it did. I, well, I it, see it. No, nope, factually speaking, it did. Mike got onto Wired Magazine, and he called Elon Musk a whore. Hold time. And he said, Seven and he seconds. Said Elon Musk was sending blimps to space and faking. He was sending blimps. He said rockets were blimps and space was fake. Mad Mike was doing nothing but damage. He was dropping bombs. He was calling out the fake space agencies left and right. So I don't know how this was a loss. This was actually what we well, did. Because, because he's died now, and so – all he's done is show that NASA are the professional space guys, and they really know what they're doing. And right, lunatics, right, lunatics that drive limousines. And Leave it to the pros. Yeah. Leave it to the experts. Hey, we got Leave it to uh, the experts. We got Derek on the line. Derek, I think I heard you talk to Brian Stavely four years ago on this topic. I I did not yeah. know that this happened uh, with Brian Stavely as well. Yeah, I, I yeah I remember vaguely talking about him. But I just want to ask Tim, on the biggest day of your event, you spent so much money. Why weren't you there? Wouldn't you want to get the notoriety? Why weren't you there? That's all I have to ask. I couldn't afford it. And I oh, had okay. Russ with Flat Earth Radio, who lived out in California, go out there for me. And then, at the, so we, we, you know, this is, I went out there in August. Look, I spent a lot of money. I was out there in August for a couple of weeks, and it didn't launch. Because they heat it up, it doesn't reach the right temperature, they can't go. So they didn't successfully launch when I was there. And I spent money. We had a friend come from Australia, spent a lot of money, time and energy. So we, we invested a lot, and we didn't get the shot because it didn't go. But then his subsequent launch when we weren't there went up. And so I just couldn't afford it because every time it was okay. like it was a gamble. It was like, do, is he going to launch today? And we wouldn't know. We'd be sitting there all day in the sun, and it's like uh, we're still waiting. The temperature may not be there. So, no, it, it was um, – if you watch the documentary, you'll see steam-powered rockets aren't so easy as you, you just light a fuse and it goes Yeah, up. no, no, I, I, I watched all those documentaries. It's been years ago for now. I, I forget. But I, I just looked at the rocket. It's like he needs guys to place him inside there, like, because it's so crammed up. Like, how – if something goes wrong, what's the parachute for? How's he going to get out? Well, that's kind of the thing. It's exceedingly dangerous, and his whole thing was he had these – he had to pull the parachute himself, and they had a microphone. So if you watch the first one, he's talking to people on the ground, and he's not going to pull the parachute. Look, he told me he can't tell if he's going up or down. He said it's disoriented. I get that. And that he needs what's someone the to tell him to pull the chute. Yeah, what's the point of the parachute when he's strapped in there? He can't move. There's no room in that thing. He's, oh, the parachute's he's like on the, in the rocket. Side the, parachute, can. The, the 
parachutes on the rocket itself. Not you, yeah, no I, way get, to I get that. So what's he doing in there? He can't move. Like I said, he, what's he going to take videos? What was the <laughs> listen? I don't want to bust your chops. It is what it is. And Darren, I'm he, was dating, it, so. he was dating Evil Knievel's Snake River jump. So Evil Knievel did this thing with a steam-powered rocket. He went over Snake River. He almost died, and Mike wanted to beat him in height. And so he had cameras yeah. in the rocket. They had drone cameras. They had cameras on the ground. Yeah. Even this one, one Science I, Channel had – there's there's video of this thing. One-Eye Jack is saying uh, if the mainstream media was there, why is the video so lousy? Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm <laughs> that, that's a good show. question. What do you think, Tim? Osman? But, uh, the, look, Mike was trying to get media there, he, and we were—that's the whole thing. He, you know, we were spending a lot of money on on press releases. And in thanks for one calling of the press in, re- Derek. By the way, yeah, yeah, we were we were devoting a lot of money, putting money in press releases to get attention, to basically um, try to get the media to show up and cover it to get more coverage. Because this is a PR stunt. That's what Daredevils do. He wants to be known around the world. He wants as many people to see it as possible. And it was difficult to get people there. We got a, a writer from Wired. We had some other um, journalists there, and TMZ, we managed to get some guy to show up with his phone, but no, it wasn't a media event. It wasn't, and the Science Channel was there for Homemade Astronauts, which is about three different individuals trying different ways to go to space. Mike was one of them, so it wasn't a flat Earth rocket jump, so like, oh, this makes flat Earth look bad. No, science killed him, not flat Earth, if you want to play that game, but the fact of it is, it was a success from the time that I was involved until the... Rocket Man documentary, and two years later, and then he was going to move on to the space jump. And the whole point of it is, you can't get the money you need to spend that much on helium for the raccoon unless you had like a lot of people and sponsors. And to get like he got sponsorships, he had some dating app put money into it. He had a few other things, but he was trying to get big sponsorships. So we wanted media there, and we couldn't get them there. This was not a media event. Uh, it's a good thing he did it uh, a couple of weeks before the COVID scam launch because he would have got zero coverage after that. He literally did it on yeah. the, the Magic 222. Of course, we're always suspicious of numbers. Olf Anderson put a huge uh, gematria statement in there. He says, uh, a coincidence theorist? Come on, Tim. <laughs> Come on. So Well, the thing is, uh, look, look. I have to say, though, I don't have plausible deniability. It's very kind of Lynn to suggest I was duped. But if this was a hoax, I am part of it. I know. But you seem to you seem to be trying really hard to get yourself guilty of this uh, whole situation. But I don't think well, it, I am. I am, though. I would have to be necessarily you, so for this to be logical. But not, none of us are really convinced of that. I know. I know your argument. We heard it. But. I'm not really convinced. Frank isn't. Lynn, I think we're all really clear thinkers. Okay, well then, 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 why am I not mad about losing 40k? Why am I not? We don't. How do we know if you really lost 40k? I can show you. I can show you the receipts. We don't know if you were reimbursed. We don't know where we we can't. We don't. We can just take your word for that too. No, no, no. I have. I have. I can back it. I can even show you other stuff. I can back this stuff. I can even show you scraps of the rocket. I've got no reason. I've got no reason to doubt that you. No, we don't. We're not putting any money on any table. You you actually did all these things. I've got no reason. The reasons why you're not angry. Who knows? Mm -hmm. It's just you know. It's your personality. It's your your it wasn't a Christian tragic nature. death. It's your... It wasn't a tragic death. It wasn't a tragic death in the sense of like a, a skydiver or something. Because this was a person who was basically um, putting his life on the line. It was all about the possibility of death. And utterly meaningless. Death, utterly no, meaningless. Utterly yeah, meaningless. To you. There are people who inject stuff in their bodies to do competitive bodybuilding or sports before, that enlarge their hearts. People take risks. Maybe it's meaningless to you, but not to them. And the daredevils are a special class of people. I met him and a couple of his friends. Um, what, um, what I'm saying is, like, this is a different group of people who are breaking records, and they know they're taking risks. Uh, he was a daredevil uh, in the in the strictest sense, and he didn't think the other guys were real daredevils if they had backup shoots. Yeah, yeah. So this this was a gamble. D- Dingo yeah, baby, D- WWE wrestlers take risks. Dingo believe. baby says nobody doubts the story that was reported. But the question is whether they believe the story. You can't debunk that disbelief by dot, dot, dot. Okay, interesting. Let me address that one because this is a – the main reason I want to have this conversation is that mm-hmm. there's there's this breakdown I have between the auto-believers 
and the auto hoaxers. Okay. Automatically believe the news and then automatically Right. And whoever doesn't believe what you believe. No, 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 wrong. No, no, let me complete oh, this. Okay. Let me complete this. Let me complete and, this. And you are an auto hoaxer, this. right? No, I am. But here's the thing. Um skepticism is not being prejudiced against everything and just calling it fake. It's suspending judgment till you get the best available facts. I've been spouting facts that most people here didn't know about, so you didn't have a full picture. My point being, there's a difference between what I am an informed non-believer when it comes to the news events and low information non-believer. Uh, you're, you're not you're not so well informed about vaccines. You're not so well no, no, wait, wait, about, the about, about geoengineering let's, either. Let's not let's not change the subject because low information. <laughs> you're not the most well informed person no, in the universe. Uh, low information non-belief is different qualitatively than informed disbelief. I know why something's fake if I call it fake. Somebody says, I think koalas are fake. Why? Your feelings? They don't have any facts to back it up. So what I'm saying here is that your someone's disbelief in the story is coming from a place of low information unless they've been apprised of what's I followed that. I followed every detail of that Mike you sing because I resented him. You didn't I know resented he was in jail. him taking your time, your resources, your devotion – your attention, he must have really worked you. That's what, what do you I mean? Happened. I paid him to put our meme on his rocket explicitly to blow up the meme, and it succeeded in every way we wanted it. Blow up what meme? Flat research Earth? Flat, re, yes, Flat Earth, exactly. <laughs> flat Earth. Research right. Flat James, Earth. Not, not research alternate cosmology. No, no, not research, research, flat research Earth. NASA hoaxes. Research no, flat research Earth. Flat Earth. Yes, and I say Earth. anybody driving by the highway who saw that would say, Oh, yeah, I'm going to research Bigfoot. I'm going to no, research uh, that faces on the moon. That That's how they would think about it. They'd think about it. the most effective billboard campaign of the year, and we got behind it. We did that. It was a success. Tim, what do you think of this comment by uh, Angle of Elevation? It's hard to remove confirmation bias when you're personally involved. When, when why they had so many... Screw. Yeah. So, for example, so many people made screws for the moon landing, uh, so that they would feel personally involved. That's yeah, true. I understand that. That's well, a good one. I like that. The psyop happened near me, therefore it's real. Or I know somebody who claims they were injured by this, therefore it's real. I'm not making that kind of argument at all. I'm saying that you don't have enough information to dismiss the claim that he died based on that one video clip. When there's a and whole. And you weren't there. You weren't minded. there yourself that day either. So you're relying on who's. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. You don't know the set. Can you, Lynn? Can you describe the set where it happened? Who was there? Well, I don't know everybody that was there. I watched no, no, the no, video no, but, like everybody no, else. No, but no, you, that's, since that's, you no. weren't there, I'm asking you. No, what I'm saying, Lynn, I'm is that it was, you who it was you not, relied on, who you relied on, I to see to the, that there was I truly talked, a death. I talked to the when, the instant it happened, and I heard about the parachute. I called the rocket scientist, the one who worked, who built the rocket with Mike, and he said. Mike died a daredevil's death. Yeah, and we this can was trust corroborated. Them for sure. uh, we can believe well, them, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, look, you don't have anything to refute what I'm saying. You don't have enough information about the movie set that we're calling it. It's a stage set. You have the science channel there. It's a movie set. <laughs> but it wasn't closed. There was public there. And you can't run a side in front of the public. And the rocket was there, fully exposed. There's nowhere for him to disappear to. Nowhere. But I, look, I, I, I'm, I'm going to say straight out, Tim, magical tricks have been done like this for a long, long time. Oh, th this is the prestige for sure. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't see any reason for us to, to know that anyone was in that rocket as, you know, for yeah. all my complaining about Dave J getting angry. The point well, then, okay, if we're going with this clear. then, let's, let's follow this through then. If you're suggesting that this was a trick, then why was the 2018 one allowed to proceed? Who knows that that we was real? Who knows that that, was that, that wasn't either. fake? We don't, we don't know anything about it. Yeah, wow. The 2018 launch, you don't know anything about it? It was That one is very well documented. Oh, you know it was real. You know it was but, real. There's yes, no reason, it was there's no reason it to was, suspect well, anyone would have gone into those rockets. None of you have any How do you know the Falcon? How do you know the Elon Musk launches aren't Wait, real? You don't have any information to debunk the 2018 launch at all. You mean I wasn't close enough to it? No, no, you don't have enough information about it to no, say. No, no, but, but, but Tim, what you're saying is you're relying on our believing that the first launch was real to accept the second launch was real. I've got no reason to think there was anyone on either rocket, especially when he's taken so few precautions. Mm -hmm. well, that doesn't I, the seem... reason I do, though, the reason I do is that the rocket, again, 
the launch would not have happened if it wasn't for me bailing him. That's out. what you think. That's no, no. what you think. They've got How's, you thinking man, that. How could he have got you thinking it? Yeah. Man, how could he They've have got, got you jail? thinking you're the guy that made this possible. No, you're wait, so that was emotionally this, committed to it. No, this was you're invested a lot man. in it. I understand. I'm I not do. the emotional one here, Lynn. And that no, you, you invested a lot in this. You invested no, a lot I, of money. You invested time. No, Lynn. This and I could tell you really believed in this guy, and I never trusted him. From no, the I believed ago. in the project, but this rocket launch wouldn't have happened if I didn't bail him out, and it wasn't public knowledge that he needed bailing out. So if this was a, an operation, why would they – like you wouldn't have David Hogg in jail the night before because he got pulled over for drunk driving, and then Parkland happens, and he's not there. You understand? They might have had a backup plan, but anyway. Yeah, sure. You know. Anyway, lots of comments in the um... – in the chat tonight. Um, Thanks, everyone, for uh, chatting. If anyone wants I, to call I have in. to say, if nothing else, I, I have I have enjoyed it. It's been a very, for me personally, very stimulating to think about it and because it wasn't something I was taking any interest in. But I have, um, I have really picked up the point of how flat earth has been used to discredit things in a very powerful way. That, that's the thing that stood out to me from this discussion. So I thank everyone who's Contributed and all the um, yeah. people who have commented. It's been on been fire there. tonight. Tim always. Yeah, I, I, I Tim, think it's you. been excellent. Yeah. Tim, yeah. you always bring your audience. I like your audience. I, I have to say I'm ignorant mostly of the situation. I know it's an old one. I only brought this up because you posted that it's got a fresh reference to misinformation in the New Yorker. And I put a yes. I put a note yes. to that in my show notes tonight. Even though the New Yorker is behind a paywall, I did find a archive copy, so I put that in. That was the main reason I brought it up, because anytime the mainstream media reports on something, as I think you've said a million times, and I listen to most of your stuff, that it's very suspicious. The mainstream, It is. Yes. This is four years old. Why did they bring out the story after four years? And interestingly, that New Yorker piece that just came out quotes from the biography that I did. I did a biography on them. They didn't credit me, but they're obviously digging. And I'm like, four years later, this doesn't make any sense why they're bringing it up. And what they did is they bring this up to suggest that misinformation is dangerous, that Mike may not have believed it. Maybe he did, but he certainly used misinformation to get into his rocket. But even then they say this last one was from the Science Channel. Even they get it right. But, yeah, they brought it out because they we handed them a weapon. Yeah. yeah. It's well, a, Tim, can I propose a closing song? Yeah, well, we had one. We had the opening song was pretty good. Well, the but, closing one should be let's do it like they do it on the Discovery Channel. What's that? Is that a song? Yeah. It's called Let's Do It Like They Do It on the Discovery Oh, I can't, that's the lyric. I better find it. The name I of the don't song. know about that one. I, I was playing Mad World in, in honor of Mad Mike because uh, it's a pretty oh, good song. We have a song by Chief Crow called Bad Mike. And, hey, let me answer for Napoleon Wilson. Uh, I'm not a Mason anymore. You know, they, you know I, I stopped paying dues a long time ago. Okay. I, what is the dues, I, by the way? Is it 33 a month? or? It depends on the lodge mm-hmm. and where you are. Okay. I was I, for me it was uh, um, yeah y- it was basically you pay for your initiations and then you pay for your your meal that you have on those days. Yeah, you know, no one is here. To, we're not trying to sting Tim. This wasn't the purpose of the show. It was really just to try and figure it out. And I didn't really even consider the idea that Lynn brought up that, or or Frank brought up that maybe Tim was duped by the whole situation. And we're not. We weren't really. This wasn't a witch hunt. We were. We're just trying to – I was just trying to point out consistencies in the way of looking at things, especially when you're an auto hoaxer. I mean – For me, this is all about making mm -hmm. the point that skepticism isn't about being prejudiced against what's being claimed but rather suspending judgment. So we're not prejudging. We're suspending judgment, and I suspended judgment with everything until I get more facts, and the facts usually lead to a hoax. In this case – I can provide endless facts, and if somebody wanted to bet money on it, I'd take the extra effort. I would get you irrefutable DNA proof. I mean, this is not hard. I would get whatever. My point of it is, the burden of proof has been established from my perspective. And, and, uh, I just, I just, well, well, from my I mean, point of view, I think Mad Max is playing the role of Joe Biden. My, my, I don't know who. Somebody Mad said Max he was is. John Bon Jovi. And he had that hair, but yeah. By the way, I didn't like Opie and Anthony, Mister Trustworthy. So I never, I, I was a Stern fan. Opie and Anthony would have been a very pale, uh, distant 
third or fourth compared to Stern. So sorry about that. I'm not. I um. I'm more of a moderator anyway, even though I didn't do much moderating tonight. But I really appreciate uh, all the participants. Does Does anyone want to make any closing statements tonight before we play out? Well, it's, I I just can't believe that. You weren't even at the scene, but you're convinced that he really died. Mm-hmm. I, I can't wrap my head around that. I, I don't know how. Well, Lynn, you don't know anybody who died from the pokey personally, and yet you're convinced a billion people died of it. What's that? I'm not convinced yeah. of anything. <laughs> not really. No, I understand where everyone's coming from, and I respect your positions, and thank you for coming here with it all. And to, to me, you know, I'm not trying to tell people what to believe. I'm just making the point that we have to know why we believe what we believe and why we don't believe what we don't believe. And not all disbelief is equal. You have low info disbelief and high info disbelief. Anyway, I appreciate everyone's Tim, time here. Tim, before you go, I just, I just, I'm going to comment on the pokey comment. And, pokey and, and we need a movie list of what we should educate ourselves with. But well. regard your pokey comment, just, you know, relying on the, if we rely on the statistics provided by the Victorian government, there's a very clear signal that the pokey increased the registered deaths. Well, if we the rely court. on mainstream media reportage, then there's a clear signal. I'm, that I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not relying on that. I'm just relying on the official, official government register statistics, of deaths the registry, yeah. the, the Victorian government. If you And if you want me to, I, I'm happy to send you that link and you can see those statistics for yourself cool i appreciate it thank you for um thank you for the chat and thank you fakeologists for having me on and yeah this only came up because the new yorker made it a story again and that's very suspect we should there's there's obviously something about to happen in the financial world then is all i can say we should recommend uh tim's video which i think is probably the best documentary ever done on a movement to dissect it and deconstruct it, and that's uh, behind the perv. And I, I put a link to it in the forum. It really is an excellent documentary. Where, uh, it, I, where, where is that found? Where can we? It, psyops should be under psyops, I think. Let's see. Oh, okay, but where is the movie norm, hosted, Tim Osman? Where do you? Um, you well, you, there's a you, there's a YouTube version. Oh, of it's it. on just, YouTube. Yeah, okay. yeah, just search behind the perv, and you can find out about the people who wanted pervs on their side and not the Rocket Man. Okay, but that... even then, even then, you weren't entirely aware of that because you were originally collaborating with Mark Sargent and some of them. I got a old YouTube video of you with Mark Sargent and some of the other of that clique. So I think it took a while for you to figure out that they were, well, that they were agents. Uh, no, we we assumed we assumed so. In fact, we we joined them with the assumption that we were trying to co-opt the controlled opposition. We called ourselves uncontrolled opposition. That's why I used Mark Sargent's name at that city council thing. We wanted to co-opt the control opposition and throw it into other areas. We didn't want them to get all the traffic. Have you ever had a uh, chat? Have you ever had a, a show with Mark Sargent? Oh yeah, yeah he we, was on a- we have. We've we've chatted a few times, and he got really mad because Mad Mike was filing legal claims on Mark Sargent, saying it wasn't his real name; he was an actor. So Mike had basically made these common law legal claims against Mark Sargent, Patty Steer, and Martin Rick Hummer, a few others, and they called the FBI, claiming extortion. And so the FBI arrested Mike. That's why he was being charged with 19 counts of extortion. And so the people who are part of the mainstream flat earth actually tr- – they were happy about the fact that they got him jailed, and they were surprised they got him out. But then they were happy when he crashed. But isn't it amazing how this just really is such drama and distraction? Fires everything in. And it just takes everything away from what we're trying to ac- talk about. We're, we're right off topic when there's so much drama – do you think it's all deliberate just to get people completely off topic? Anybody? Yeah, I do. I, do. I think it's entirely about that. Everything is about divide and conquer in the current world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I've always proposed jab, jab, using... jabs, no jobs, flat, not flat. Um, right, uh, flat Earth. I, I hate the phrase. I hate sovereign the citizens and you know craziness. Alternate cosmology. Alternate cosmology. Alternative cosmology. Hey, going to the moon. Germ theory. Tim Osmond, do you think uh, Bob Nodal faked his death, the gold buster? Well, let me bring this up because it comes down to extraordinary claims. Mm-hmm. A man of his age with a sickness like that is probably – it's not extraordinary. Okay. Um, a daredevil dies. That's not even an extraordinary claim. 
No. So I don't even think that this qualifies as a, quote, auto-hoaxing event. Okay. Um, when I say fake until proven real, it's actually fake until proven real if it's an extraordinary event and it's unbelievable. It's out of the blue. And, no, everybody thought he was going to die. NASA was watching. So he, had, he had some people from JPL he met at the Adventures Club in L.A., and they told him, yeah, NASA's taking bets. They've been watching all of your launches, and they take bets on whether you're going to die. So um, just to give you a little more insight there and how this thing – how – he was not part of their thing. Uh, Ted Stryker says, this is the best comment of the day, I think. Looks like I picked the wrong day to quit drinking. I can't handle much more of this. So I guess we should end <laughs> it for Ted Stryker. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Tim Osmond, for joining. This was really instructional, and um, I hope we can maybe do more of this one day. If every if, sure. it, if anyone's interested, if anyone wants to further investigate it, I'm not sure uh, Frank or I am going to further investigate it, but I guess we could. Look, if mm -hmm. anybody wants to investigate, I will point you to jail records, to morgue records, to people involved, witnesses, Science Channel contacts. I'll give you audio possibly of the biography, the conversations we had. I will provide a full backdrop to say that you can't just say this person was a character made up to make flat earthers look bad. So anyway, thanks again. All right. Thank you, Tim Osman. Thank, thank you. you. Frank, this was a, 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 Tim a, a, this was a different Thursday show. Yeah, it was pretty good fun. I enjoyed it. And uh, Lynn Artell, uh, thank you for your knowledge on this. Thank you for coming back for a second day of the week. Lynn Artell is normally on Tuesdays. If you uh, enjoy Lynn Artell, she does most of the talking on her show on Tuesdays and she is a wealth of knowledge and extremely passionate. If only people my age or younger could be as passionate as Lynn. And uh, I, I personally enjoy the passion, Lynn, so keep it up as long as you can. You still there, Lynn? Yeah. What I want to do is post that link. Oh, I put to the, the – Yeah. To the uh, YouTube video where Mark Sargent and Tim Osman appear together. I would like that. And uh, talk. Want, because the you, thing is, well, you he wanna, was involved you in You want to talk about that now or, or later? Nah, well, I, I, I posted it, but I can't find it. Okay. Well, well you, you can email it to me, and I'll put it in the show notes. Yeah, i got to find it again. But it, the idea being that I'm pretty sure that initially he was involved in a sort of active collaboration with this Flat Earth movement. And then over time, obviously, he discovered Okay. That it was compromised, but I think there's a lot to be learned from that. Okay, Frank, what is I think this, that's important. Frank, what is this music video about? <laughs> what, what is the line you wanted us to take out of it? it, it it's all about the Discovery Channel. You know everything. I like We're Mad talking... World better. This is creeping me out. They're eating bugs or something. <laughs> what the hell is going on, Frank? What are you leading me on to here? Well, we, when, when I'm hearing about Mad Mike and the uh, what, what was the channel that. That was doing his recording oh, his thing. Oh, it's the science something science yeah, channel. It, it, you know, it's all the, the, the Discovery Channel's the you know the science promoter, isn't it? It's the right the fake science channel. Okay, yeah, I got it. A, well, thank you everyone for joining. I hope you guys are entertained. And this is the end of the week, and uh, we do a show Sunday through Thursday usually around eight o'clock. So all you IPS fans. Well, you know, most of our guys are IPS fans, so if you guys want to join us and talk some more truth or whatever else we talk about, you're welcome to join in. And we are value and for value. Yeah, go, Frank. Also, thanks to all the commenters. The, the terrific comments tonight. Oh, really my. Good. Well, the, the IPS community is huge, and they, they always bring good comments. So I, I really appreciate it. And I appreciate you guys, and value for value, you pay whatever you think the show is worth. You should support independent media. Everybody should, including uh, Tim Osmond's IPS. He has a Patreon. He has uh, a donation channel as well. So everyone should support independent media. If you like this stuff, or if you just like uh, mainstream media, you should keep supporting their advertisers. But I like our model where you pay what you think the show is uh, worth. So... Thanks, everyone, for joining in. This was fun, and uh, thanks, to everyone, for bringing it. Great, great, great chat. Anyway, take care, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. And I feel the way that every child should sit and listen, sit and listen, went to school.
in your 